Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. Today's the reading for August 6th. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day. May we put you first throughout our day and love you with all of our mind, heart, and soul. And may we love anybody we come across. May we love them just like how you have loved us. And may we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and worship that you deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 1, through chapter 4, verse 23. And when the seventh month had come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered together as one man to Jerusalem. Then Yeshua, the son of Yozadak, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren, arose and built the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Though fear had come upon them because of the people of those countries, they set the altar on its bases, and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and evening burnt offerings. They also kept the Feast of Tabernacles, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings in the number required by ordinance for each day. Afterwards, they offered the regular burnt offering and those for new moons and for all the appointed feasts of the Lord that were consecrated, and those of everyone who willingly offered a free will offering to the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. Although the foundation of the temple of the Lord had not been laid, they also gave money to the masons and the carpenters, and food, drink, and oil to the people of Sidon and Tyre, to bring cedar logs from Lebanon to the sea, to Joppa, according to the permission which they had from Cyrus, king of Persia. Now in the second month of the second year of their coming to the house of God at Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatil, Yeshua, the son of Josadak, and the rest of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all those who had come out of the captivity to Jerusalem, began work and appointed the Levites from twenty years old and above to oversee the work of the house of the Lord. Then Yeshua with his sons and brothers, Cadmiel with his sons, and the sons of Judah, arose as one to oversee those working on the house of God. The sons of Henadad with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with cymbals, to praise the Lord, according to the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever toward Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and heads of the fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the sound was heard afar off. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of the captivity were building the temple of the Lord God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the father's houses and said to them, let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do, and we have sacrificed to him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel and Yeshua and the rest of the heads of the fathers' houses of Israel said to them, You may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build to the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus the king of Persia has commanded us. Then the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. 
they troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia, and the reign of Ahasuerus. In the beginning of his reign, they wrote an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. In the days of Artaxerxes also, Bishlam, Mithridath, Tabal, and the rest of their companions wrote to Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the letter was written in Aramaic script and translated into the Aramaic, Aramaic language. Rehum, the commander of Shimshai, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to King Artaxerxes in this fashion. From Rehum, the commander, Rimshai, the scribe, and the rest of their companions, representatives of the Dionites, the Arf, the Afarsathites, the Tarpalites, the people of Persia, and Erech, and Babylon, and Shushan, the Dehavites, the Elamites, and the rest of the nations whom the great, the noble Osnapper took captive and settled in the cities of Samaria, and the remainder beyond the river, and so forth. This is a copy of the letter that they sent him. To King Artaxerxes, from your servants, the men of the region beyond the river, and so forth. Let it be known to the king that the Jews who came up from, from you have come to us at Jerusalem and are building the rebellious and evil city and are finishing its walls and repairing the foundations. Let it now be known to the king that if this city is built and the walls completed, they will, pay, they will not pay tax, tribute, or custom, and the king's treasury, treasury will be diminished. Now because we received support from the palace, it was not proper for us to see the king's dishonor. Therefore we have sent and informed the king that search may be made in the book of the records of your fathers. And you will find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city, harmful to kings and provinces, and that they have incited sedition within the city in former times, for which cause this city was destroyed. We inform the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, the result will be that you will have no dominion beyond the river. The king sent an answer. To Rehum, the commander, to Shimshai, the scribe, to the rest of their companions who dwell in Samaria, and to the remainder beyond the river. Peace, and so forth. The letter which you sent to us has been clearly read before me, and I gave the command, and a search has been made, and it was found that this city in former times has revolted against kings, and rebellion and sedition have been fostered in it. There have also been mighty kings over Jerusalem, who have ruled over all the region beyond the river, and tax, tribute, and custom were paid to them. Now give the command to make these men seize that this city may not be built until the command is given by me. Take heed now that you do not fall, fail to do this. Why should damage increase to the hurt of the kings? Now when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum, Shimshai the scribe, and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem against the Jews and by force of arms made them seize. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, through chapter 3, verse 4. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory, for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, 
they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? The book of Psalm chapter 28 verses 1 through 9. A Psalm of David To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me, lest, if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors, and give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve, because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people, and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verses 24 through 25. A man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? It is a snare for a man to devote rashly something as holy, and afterward to reconsider his vows. May you all have a blessed day. May God bless you all. Peace out.